Okay guys, so in today's video, we're gonna be looking at how exercise can affect the distribution of blood in the body. Before we can talk about how blood is redistributed as a result of exercise, we need to understand these key terms. So vasoconstriction is when blood vessels decrease in size. Vasodilation is when blood vessels increase in size, as we can see in the diagram here. So just to reiterate, when vessels constrict, they reduce blood flow in that area of the body. When blood vessels dilate, they increase blood flow to that area of the body. The next key term that we need to be aware of is precapillary sphincter. So when we're at rest, we can see in this diagram here that blood flow to the working muscles is reduced. That's a result of these precapillary sphincters being closed. When we start exercising, however, these precapillary sphincters open, which increases the blood flow throughout the working muscle, allowing more oxygen to be delivered. Okay, so during exercise, blood flow is redistributed away from non-essential body parts to working muscles. During sustained exercise, Blood flow is also directed towards the skin, and this helps the body to cool down. It's a form of thermoregulation. And we talk about that again in option A2. So both of these functions are facilitated by vasoconstriction and vasodilation of blood vessels and the opening and closing of precapillary sphincters. So as we can see on this diagram here, when we're at rest, the biggest supply of blood is to the liver, digestive system, and to the kidneys. However, during exercise, that reduces significantly and increases significantly in the working muscles. You can also see that on these two graphs, as absolute cardiac output increases as a result of intense exercise, but also the percentage of cardiac output supplied to the muscles increases significantly as well. The next thing we need to talk about is cardiovascular drift. Now, we've got a journal article here, and I'll put the link to that in the description below the video. Okay, so we need to know what is cardiovascular drift, what are the reasons behind it, and what types of exercise cause cardiovascular drift. So if we look at this graph here, we can see that as exercise intensity and as, as the duration of exercise increases, we can see that there's a steady increase of heart rate. We can also see that cardiac output is maintained. Now we need to make sure that cardiac output is maintained so that working muscles receive the amount of oxygen that they need. The reason why cardiac output doesn't increase, however, as a result of heart rate going up is because stroke volume goes down, okay, as well as mean arterial pressure. So we can see on the graph here, stroke volume and mean arterial pressure are reduced, whilst at the same time, heart rate increases. So the reasons for this decrease in stroke volume is a result of um, blood flow increasing to the skin as a result of vasodilation, but it's also caused by um, dehydration as a result of sweating during sustained periods of exercise. So what are the implications then for your training to make sure that you don't experience this? It's really important that you monitor your training heart rate as if you're experiencing cardiovascular drift, your heart rate can increase as much as 15% more than what it should be at a certain intensity. So it's important to monitor your heart rate. It's also really important that you maintain your hydration levels. Okay, so what you can do now is you can have a practice at drawing your own graph to represent cardiovascular drift, remembering that heart rate increases, stroke volume decreases, whilst maintaining cardiac output. Okay, thanks for watching. See you next time.